This is the Yab ConvoCast. One-on-one conversations with your other brother's authors, community members, supporters, and friends. What's up, friends, and welcome to the Yab ConvoCast. Conversations with people inside, outside, and around the Yab universe. And this is really fun because not since Keegan, our dear beloved Keegan, have we had one of our Yabbers, one of our supporters on Patreon, come on this show and tell us who they are and have a conversation with me. And so I'm really excited for him to follow in Keegan's footsteps. Um, I've gotten to meet him. He's a fantastic guy. Pretty consistent, pretty much as consistent as they come on our Zoom calls. It's always a joy to see him. And his name is Alex. What's up, Alex? Hey, Tom. How's it going? It's going so well. I'm freezing in my apartment. I have a blanket draped over me and I'm cold. But other than that, my body's cold, but my heart is warmed to see you here. So thank you (laughs) for coming on this episode today. It's so good to see you, man. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to be here. It's kind of crazy that I'm on the combo cast. This is, uh, I've made it. Yeah. I've made it. Did you think? When you, when you, I asked Keegan this too, like when you found Yob, did you ever think you would one day appear on this podcast? <laughs> was, was that a thought when you discovered Yob? I could be on that show someday. Truly, I had no idea that this was going to happen. So I'm excited it's to be It's fair here. to say, it's fair to say dreams come true, don't they? <laughs> oh yeah, especially here in the City of Angels, it definitely comes true. That's right. Tell us about yourself because you were in the City of Angels for I mean, I didn't live in Los Angeles, but well, I don't know if you live in Los Angeles proper. You can explain where you live. But I lived in the L.A. County, Orange County area for four years. And um, I guess following in Keegan's footsteps, also in SoCal, I feel I feel a sense of loss that all of you guys have been popping up in Yob years after I no longer live on the West Coast. Like, that's really sad to my heart, but we're not going to dwell too much on that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about yourself, though, Alex. All right, here's my uh, elevator pitch of who I am. So I am not originally from California. I am from the East Coast, the lovely southern state of Georgia. And I have been here in California for a little over six years now. And I am above Los Angeles proper in the good old San Fernando Valley. Wow. You know, you and I have very strangely mirrored life paths because I also grew up on the East Coast, moved to California. You've been there for six years. I just celebrated my six-year anniversary of living in Asheville. So we pretty much moved at the same times to different parts of the country, like in a mirror fashion, like reversed. So it was it's very strange. Like you and I have a lot in common, which is really cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Who knows? We may have passed each other on the way to and from the place. We could have crisscrossed applesauce on the interstates somewhere. Who knows? Who knows? Um, how did you discover Yob? And when did you discover Yob? You've been with us for, I feel like, a couple of years now, haven't you? I've been with you for a little over a year now. I feel like it's been longer okay. than that, but it's only been a year. I found y'all through a friend of mine who was helping me through a really dark time in my life. And I had never met anyone else in the church who was uh, SSA or same-sex attracted. And he pointed me in the direction of many resources, one of them being Yob. And so I stalked y'all and lurked, as as we call it, mm. for a long time, probably about a year before finally okay. making the decision to hop on board. So you are what they say, what we say, a lurker no longer. <laughs> Absolutely. (laughs) It's one of my organic phrases. I don't know who came up with it, if it was me or someone in the community, but like, it's one of my favorites because we have so many lurkers who become supporters, who become yobbers, and now they're they're on the in, they're on the inside. And so it's good to have all of our lurkers. And for anyone who's listening, who's still a lurker, there's no rush, you know, keep, keep listening, keep reading, keep, keep feeling it out. We welcome the lurkers at any time (laughs) and the fanboys as well. The fanboys alike, we welcome you right away. Um, when I was talking with you, Alex, so first of all, I'm so glad you're here. here. I'm glad you decided to brave these waters and come on this podcast with me. Um, I hope more of our supporters follow in your and Keegan's footsteps because I love having these conversations with members of our community. Um, and when we were talking about things to potentially discuss today, 
Um, something that's come up a lot, and I hope our audience isn't getting sick of it because this is like continuing a streak lately where we're talking a lot about LGBT media. And so we've done a couple episodes, Yobcast episodes on it. Um, and then I think blogs have come, been coming out too about Luca and um, Pastor Will wrote a blog about Handsome Devil. So there's been a lot of like LGBT conversation about media works, whether it's TV shows, movies, um, what have you. And so I guess we're just in one of those, one of those, I wouldn't call it a rut because that sounds negative. It's not a rut. It's just like, <laughs> oh, here's a, here's a thing we haven't explored really in our community a whole lot is LGBT media. Um, and something that you and I have connected over is this show, a Hulu original, this, this convo cast not sponsored by Hulu, but it is a Hulu original called Love Victor, a TV show that has put out a couple seasons now. Um, and it's sort of, well, it's not sort of, it does follow in the aftermath of the movie Love, Simon, which we've referenced and talked about a couple times in our community. And I wanted to go, let's just start with the basic question. Like, why do you love this show or why is it important to you? Or why do you feel inclined to talk about it with me here today? Well, uh, Love, Victor was probably one of the first shows of uh, this type of content that I had ever like been really interested in viewing, having grown up a lot with not a lot of this kind of, uh, you know, LGBT content growing up, it was something that was pretty foreign to me until within the past probably seven ish years or so, having been to college and gotten to hear a lot about this type of content from other people and friends. So when love Victor came around, I was very interested from probably from the get go. When I saw the trailers, I was like, okay, this seems pretty interesting, pretty good. And then once it it dropped in 2020 in the middle of everything, I was like, well, I'm not doing anything else. And why don't we just start this and see how it goes? And needless to say, probably over the course of two days, I binged the whole season. So it was yeah. very, very rapid pace. And I just fell in love with it. I loved Love, Simon. Uh, for quite quite a while, I hadn't wa- I hadn't watched it until I heard of Love Victor, and I was like, "Well, I might as well watch this, <laughs> so I have some context into the show." And I just fell in love with it. So it was kind of a domino effect, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. Some people, when the pandemic struck, some people had Tiger King, and some people had Love Victor, or some people had both. <laughs> I guess you could you could love Tiger King and love Victor at the same time. But um, yeah, love Victor. Love, I should say the title, love, comma, Victor, yes. the title of this show that we're discussing. <laughs> um, it's funny because I've known about it ever since it came out. And I watched Love, Simon have, you know, resonated strongly with the storyline of finding, finding like an outlet on the internet to talk about sexuality. Like that is such a core storyline for me that clicked with me right away when I watched Uh, that movie. And so I'm kind of shocked at myself that I didn't start watching this show until literally a couple weeks ago. Um, In the, in the midst of having all this conversation in our community about LGBT media and gay representation, this show got brought up by, I guess, by you and maybe one or two other guys in our community on on the zoom call that we had. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Now's the time. Now is the time to jump on this bandwagon, see what this show is all about. I think I avoided it because I expected it to not live up to love Simon. I was kind of like, Oh, it's just going to be a lesser love Simon. How can they just do that story again? Like that, it it didn't feel as, I guess, gripping to me the second time. Um, But I was curious. I was like, you know what? These guys have been raving about it. Like a couple of you guys were all about this show. And I was like, let's, let's see what it's all about. I saw there was two seasons. As of now, I've only seen season one and you've only completed season one as well. So, so we're putting out the spoiler alert mega horn right now. So we'll discuss some details. We probably won't like be super specific about certain things. So you can still enjoy the show if you want to enjoy it. But, um, but I only have season one to talk about. So, so that's kind of, we're going to talk about today, but, um, but yeah, I mean, there is so much in there. Like, is there, does anything jump out from season one um, story-wise or something that compares to your life that you wanted to start with to to talk about? Cause I have a few things that I jotted down, but I wanted to go to you first and see if there's anything about season one in particular that jumped out at you. Yeah, uh, the first episode, I started this almost like journal, if you will, kind of, I thought it was in the sense of like live blogging the, uh, my reaction and my That's cool. reflection, if you will, on the, on the episodes as I watched them. 
And so the first episode, I had quite the uh, quite the response. I'm looking at it now in in my journal app here. It's easily like over six paragraphs. So this is cool. So while the show was going, you were like typing, you were writing stuff down as the show, as you watched it. More or less. It was kind That's of, so cool. it was kind yeah. of a uh, reflection more, more so than an actual like live blogging, but okay. you know, so it's most of it is like just kind of recapping what happened in the episode and mainly me just kind of like processing like all the different things that happen, but truly the main just the premise of it alone was like probably what hit me the most because i had never felt like so connected to a premise before and so for those of you who don't know love victor is about a a high school sophomore who is uh half puerto rican and half colombian and he comes from a religious upbringing in texas and moves to atlanta georgia my home state Thank you very much. Uh, moving there uh, mid-year and exploring his sexuality. And so needless to say, me being a uh, me being half Thai, this was like my cup of tea. Like it was a res- perfect mm-hmm. recipe for me to get emotional. So I did. <laughs> I proceeded yeah. to get emotional the first episode. It was very uh, it was very good. That is an interesting. Let's go. Let's just go straight there to the the racial dynamic because you know, Love Simon, a very white movie, lots of white people everywhere. <laughs> Contrast Love Simon with with this show, which is so diverse. Like, there's a couple. There's only like two, I think, white like main white characters in the show. Otherwise, you have lots of Latino or black or is there any other races represented? I don't know, but it's like a very diverse. Um, cast in this show yeah and so there's that element of too like do you feel comparing this show with love simon do you feel a kinship or a a connection just based on that alone right there yeah probably a little bit like i'd never really had something like this that was you know i could relate to in that regard of you know feeling like they looked like me in a show at least so that was really nice to have and though i really resonated probably more so with the other two aspects of like him coming from a religious background and also, you know, going through this, the, the hard process and the struggle of uh, going through his sexuality and trying to figure out what in the world all that is. Yeah. With the religious background, I'm curious how, um, how that lands with you because we see a little bit of it. Like I'm not going to diss on this show a whole lot. Like I'll just, I'll bring up some things that I noticed and then you can tell me if I'm crazy or, or if you picked up on it too, but they show a couple scenes like towards, from what I remember towards the beginning of the series where they were like in their church in Texas or uh, they're showing scenes. Sometimes they're around the dinner table and the mom or dad might cross themselves or something like to me, I feel like that could have been more of a focus for this show because they kind of say it there's a whole mantra with writing like show not tell so show them being religious instead of just saying that they're religious or saying that they are christian or catholic or whatever faith they they ascribe to because there was part of me as the show goes on and this is mentioned that he comes from a religious conservative family um that i wish i saw more of it and in particular i wish we saw more of victor's connection or disconnect with that because we really don't get a whole lot I don't know if they explore this more in, in the future of the series, but we don't get a whole lot of like, does does he believe in God? Does he pray? Does he, or is he just like, think that his parents are insane for believing in a God? Like, I wish I saw more of that. That was kind of my main, if I was going to use the word criticism of the show, it's just something I was more curious about actually, is I just wanted to know more about how religion did play into him being closeted. Yeah, uh, that was definitely something I didn't think about too much in terms of, like being disappointed that they didn't explore that more. But uh, I'm tagging my spoiler here. They do explore that (laughs) a little bit more in season two. So, okay. That was well done though. You didn't say how or what happens. Like that's a good little, um, what's it called? Foreshadowing. So there we go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was, uh, though I did like them showing at least a little bit that they did at the beginning of like him coming from, like that church and like how he was like uncomfortable sitting in the pews next to his folks while all the while hearing like the, the gossipy chatter of other people being like talking about someone else that like walked by and be like, 
oh, is he is he gay? No, mm. he's just a really nice boy kind of deal, you know? Yeah, and I could relate with that as a nice boy myself. And I could also relate with <laughs> just like some gay jokes or like, or there's like parents would just make, and I can, I can on the one hand have an empathy for parents. Cause they just, I don't know that any parent from that background would assume, would just assume that one of their children might be gay. Like that's just not a mindset. Now, hopefully that's becoming more common as we, you know, progress through the years and decades, but, but coming from where they came from, the culture that they came from, like, why would they assume one of their kids is gay? Like, why would that even be on their radar? Um, and I can relate with that sense, too, of parents or family, other family members, like, making a gay joke or or something. And then it just really hitting you in a crazy way because you are still trying to process it yourself and you don't know what to do. Like, do you laugh along? Do you confront them? Do you, like, what do you do with that? So I, that's something that I definitely picked up on a few times throughout the throughout the show. Yeah, absolutely. That was that was something I picked up on too. So it was very reflective for me in terms of thinking about kind of my upbringing in the church and how I either, you know, there was a lack thereof processing this part of my life or, you know, trying to process it in the midst of all of those kind of things going on around me and hearing that constantly from other from other boys and from other people. So yeah, it was definitely mm-hmm. something I thought about too. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of the big one of the big things for me was well, okay. First of all, going into the show, I had no idea that the guy, the actor that played Simon, was even involved. I just assumed that this was a totally different universe that it was not yeah. interconnected whatsoever. That was, and that if I had known that Simon was involved, I would have been all in right away because I was like, oh, there's there's actually continuity, like it's its own story and it, and it operates apart from the Love Simon characters, but. But there is crossover and there is connection there. Um, and so a big part of the story is when he meets Simon and meets and furthermore meets his LGBT community in the heart of New York. So, you know, you go from Georgia to the heart of New York. Uh, it's a whole different world. Um, and how did this hit you? Because he meets them and it's like very awkward and very like in his face at first and he doesn't know what to do with that. And then by the end of the episode, like they're literally wrapping their arms around him using the language of family and connecting with him. And he feels like he can let loose and just belong. Like whenever I see stories like that, it, it hits me in two different ways. Cause on the one hand, there's a heartwarm, there's a genuine heartwarmingness that this kid doesn't have to be alone anymore, that there are people who love him without reservation and, and just totally, like the fact he he was trying to wrap his head around it, which I thought the show did really well of like, why would strangers love me? Like what, why, yeah. what have I done or what have I done? And the fact that they're not strangers, the fact that they're part of this bigger community um, is a really powerful concept. And then, but then the flip side of that obviously is like coming on the other side of this from a spiritual standpoint and feeling like, but, but what if, what if this could be like what Yab is doing or what other side B communities or, or ministries are doing like to have that same exact feeling, but to provide somebody with a sense of walking out their faith. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's something that again conjures up a lot of conflict in me because I want to love it. And I do love it, but there is just this, a sense of despair, but like, but like, what if, what if Victor found, like, what if Victor Googled Yob? (laughs) You know, like, what do we do with that? How do you, how does, how does that hit you? Well, yeah, it hit me. In a similar way, true, truthfully, I I thought from from that specific episode, I believe that's episode. Looking at my journal here, episode number <laughs> eight, reflection here. Uh, yeah, that that episode was one of the the other major ones I I journaled about, and you know there were two the two specific messages that came away from that was like you said the the LGBTQ plus community as being family, and that was something I really resonated with in that, you know, they really bonded together in terms of feeling those same experiences of rejection and shame and pressure to conceal and fear associated with like being brought up in like religious environments. Cause there was another character that had a similar experience to, uh, to Victor. And so I was like, okay, we got some nice, uh, some nice kinship here between these two. And, you know, Victor doesn't feel as very awkward with with this uh, with this character. I believe the character's name was in the show Justin. This was that was quite the quite the character building moment for him in terms of like 
shedding that sort of like uncertainty about being who he, who he was or who he is, you know? And so I thought about that too, in terms of like, well, what does this, you know, what does this look like in terms of his, like, well, his, but also like my relationship, I guess, with the church and being like, well, it's interesting that both communities, both the church and the LGBT community have this sort of emphasis on family and have this emphasis on community. And yet they don't see eye to eye too much, but they have a lot in common in terms of that ardent yeah. desire to be family and to be known by one another. And so like, I thought for sure this was a great sort of like flip of the coin showing that like, Hey, they, they have that same value as well as we do. And so hopefully, I mean, it's my honest hope that one day there can be some sort of, you know, reconciliation between the two communities where we like realize, Hey, we both value this aspect of community and family. Why don't we sit down and talk about it? Like that would be amazing. And you know, at the same time, I also felt like this is kind of where I diverged a little bit from where from where Victor was and how his story was more, you know, just going full on into into that community with, an, you know, another example of, you know, religion and the church being, you know, rejecting people like him and just kind of really looking at my own life and seeing how much that like, even though it was hard even though it was difficult, there were people who God put in my life in the church who absolutely loved me and walked alongside me, even in some of the toughest moments. And so it's hard for me to kind of reconcile the whole like, oh, the church is all bad and doesn't support, you know, LGBT Christians and they hate us, hate us all. But no, it's, there are, there are plenty of people who who'd be willing to sit down and listen. It's, it's an interesting dialogue to be like kind of in the middle of this, where we are as side B Christians and say, you know, there are people in the church who would, you know, show kindness and compassion and be there for you and really learn to love, love you where you're at, as opposed to this constantly like, Oh, anyone associated with the church is just, you know, out to get you and the villain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I I know I know there are lots of churches doing this well, and so definitely don't want to hate on the church because we nope. can give the church enough enough grief yeah. in this community. We can call them out when we need to, but we need to support them when they're doing it well. And I know there are a lot of churches, um, pastors and youth pastors and small group leaders doing this well. So um, this is an episode though that you referenced. I think whatever it was, episode eight of season one, like like that is an episode. If I wanted to like show a church if i wanted to show a pastor like five minutes or 10 minutes or or heck the whole episode 30 minutes of like watch this and tell me is your church doing this is it welcoming in the victors out there in this kind of a way um like i'd be curious to see what the response is because that that definitely hit me as like wow this could be a really great way to um to show the church like again this concept of it's like and again like i love how you hit on that that it's so similar the fact that we're big on family and bro- my brother, my brother, brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ. And like, like we are a family. Right. And so the, fa- the fact that the LGBT community does this so well in so many ways, we might disagree obviously on a lot of theological things or other things, but like the call, the whole concept of just family is, is very powerful and is so profoundly done in this episode. So definitely um, recommend someone checking that out if they want to just see a visual for, for what does family look like? Um, yeah, I, I yearn for a side B show like this. And we've talked about this on the podcast and in Zoom rooms, like, like what are the likely, what's the likelihood of a love victor for, for side B audiences, for, for someone who finds your other brothers or finds a side B community on the internet or, or goes to a church where, where a side B theology is presented, but it's not fluffy and flowery. It's not like completely depressing and gory either. Like the fact that there can be an honestly well-told story. Like I hope, I hope there's a room for that someday. Cause I would certainly be, eager to watch that. Yeah, that would definitely be a fascinating thing to uh, to see happen for sure. I don't know if it'll happen soon, but it will be fascinating to see someone in maybe, the future. 
Maybe I need to move back to LA and get get in with the film crowd or something and start start writing this show. You, Maybe you should do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm speaking it into into the ether right now. We're putting it out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If anyone listening wants to get in touch about making a side B movie or show, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we'll get, we'll, we have to start somewhere. We got to start yeah, somewhere. Yeah, so there, networking, that. man. That's all. That's what you got to mm. do in the city. You know, before we go, Alex, I need to say that my can you guess who my favorite character in Love Victor is? I'd be curious to know who yours is too. Hmm. If I had to guess, I know you don't know me super well. You know me a little bit, right? But I don't know. Right. I don't know if anyone jumps out at you as who. Who would Tom just be absolutely drawn to in this episode, in this show? I don't know. I feel like you. You're a you're a Felix man. I feel like I feel I like am. you are. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Felix man. He is the 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 straight white best friend of our protagonist, Victor. Yes. I the moment he came on screen, he's kind of like this goofy, weird kid, but then he's just so charming, so loyal. Like he's I think he's the epitome of an Enneagram six. Like he's just so loyal <laughs> to Victor and to their friend group. Um yeah, I can't can't get enough of this Felix. What about what about you? Is is Victor your favorite, or do you have someone else? Someone else pop out? You know, I I too would probably say gut reaction would be in the Felix camp. Okay, okay. But it might be a hard tie between. I, I you know I'm not sure. Might be a hard tie between either Felix or Benji. Actually. Okay. Interesting. Very nice. Yeah. I'd be curious to hear if anyone else, because I get the sense that if a few members within our community have watched this, um, hopefully other people listening outside of our community um, have seen this show too. If you have things to say, spoiler-free things to say, um, go to our podcast episode page, yourotherbrothers.com slash podcast, and comment on this episode. Find our convo cast with Alex and tell us about Love, Victor. What do you enjoy about this show? I um, would love to see what you guys have to say about it. Um, Alex, thank you for coming on today. You know, if you're willing to come back, if this wasn't as 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 crazy of an experience as it could have been, maybe you come back and we talk about season two someday when we both complete the series. And by then, it'll probably come out with season four, three, four, five, six. By then, but I don't know. Maybe we can do season two sometime. <laughs> oh, I would, I would love to come back. And also, just so you know, they did announce season three not long oh. ago, and unfortunately, though, that's the last season. So. We can only do this three times. So, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm I'm glad there's a defined end in sight because one of my pet peeves is shows that go on too long. So I'm glad I would prefer it to be shorter than longer. Um, okay, so yeah, let's let's tentatively plan on a season two Love Victor cast. I think I think at least five people out there would appreciate it. <laughs> I I can think of a handful more. of people who would appreciate that. Yeah, and we don't have to talk about Love Victor the whole time. We can continue to learn more about you and your your affinity for hedgehogs, maybe. Or is it porcupines? I no, get them confused. It, it's it's definitely hedgehogs. Uh, hedgehogs. There's, there's mm. a, one right over here next to me. On my yes, bed. on my on my Zoom screen, I was looking at it. I was like, is there something in his background that I can comment on? And sure enough, there's a hedgehog. So yes, maybe next time, Alex, to put the foreshadowing out there, we'll get into your love of hedgehogs. So let's let's plan on circling back. Sounds like a plan. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're, if anyone listening, if you want your dreams to come true and you want to talk to me on a Yob Convo cast one day, all you got to do is join the Yobbers. Go to patreon.com slash your other bros. All the information there is there to join. And Alex, like, I'm not holding a gun to your head. Like, you can say whatever you want. Like, you enjoyed being a Yobber, right? You've enjoyed being in this community, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, he okay. says not with a gun to his head. Um, <laughs> We're 3,000 miles away, so it's impossible. It, so. It's a metaphorical gun, okay? Um, no, I absolutely love this community. I is Someone asked me uh, a couple months ago what, what, what the best thing was of my year last year, and I said, you know, joining Yob was probably the best thing I could have ever done. It was the best decision I ever made. Aww. So I love you all. It's such a great community. Aww. And we love you. I know there are people listening who love you as well. So hearts all around. Um, thanks for coming on, brother. Hope to see you on one coast or another before too long. It's been good to connect in person and digitally as well. Yeah, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see you either in person or virtually once again. Absolutely. All right, y'all. 
until we cast our next combo. Whoever it is, maybe maybe another Yabra, maybe someone else. But until that comes, see y'all later. Bye, Alex. Bye, Tom.